It's Kim's Williams here, your favorite reading specialist, and I'm going to show you how I help kids break down multi-syllabic words. Those are big words to help them read them easier, and I'll show you using my tools. Let's go. First, I want you to note that there are seven syllable types. Here we go. So let's take a word like command, and we're going to just imagine that it is a child who no, doesn't matter what grade level they're on, they just don't know how to say this word. All right, so we're going to take a word like command and we're going to break it down a bit. Here's what I would do. First, I would ask a child to label the vowels. Now, there are seven different syllable types. And so we're going to label the first two vowels and we're going to make a bridge and connect them. And then we're going to draw a dotted line in between our two consonants because this is where we have one syllable on this side and we have another syllable on this side. And both of these are closed syllables. So I would ask the child, do you identify a word inside of these two syllables? And here's the word and. But first thing we would say is we would sound out the first syllable and we would cover our hand and we say k um, com. So we have that. And then we have m and man. So knowing that these two consonants that are here lets us know that our syllable pattern is a VCCV syllable pattern. Let's try the magic E syllable pattern. So we're going to write a word like cupcake. Now this is a compound word, but for some kids they may bump into a word like this and they're not sure what to do. Well, the first thing I would do is I would have them label the vowels that they see, the first two vowels. So we have a vowel here and we have a vowel here. And we would draw our bridge that connects those two vowels. And then when we see those two consonants, we know that we can draw a dotted line because we can split those two consonants up and we have one syllable here and we have another syllable here. Now the thing is, is that they have to recognize that there is a magic E. And this is why it's so important for kids to have an understanding of long vowel sounds. Because this does not say k ak You need to know that the magic E is going to be a long vowel sound, so this will say k ache cake. So we will first sound out the first syllable, k up, cup. We have the second syllable, k ache cake. So this is what we call the magic E. So the magic E is where you have the long vowel syllable pattern and it has the that uh, silent E at the end and then we have a consonant that sits in between. And here we have just a CVC which means uh, consonant vowel consonant. Let me show you another one. Let's take what we call <laughs> a diphthong and you're like what? So we're going to take a word like scout. Now, we're going to imagine that a child never seen this word before. They're not sure how to say it. First thing we would do is we would label the vowels. So we have a vowel here and we have a vowel here. And we would recognize that this is what we call a blend. So this is a blend. And a blend is when you have two letters put together and they make their own sound. So we have sk. So this goes sk. And then here we see that these two vowels, it's a diphthong, but it makes the owl sound, like owl. So we're going to put a DT for a diphthong. Now this is when kids learn about the syllable patterns. And in order for them to learn about the seven most common syllable patterns, they have to be taught this explicitly. So here's one of those examples again, where a child may recognize, oh, I see a word inside of this word that I know. And we see out. And then we have sk. So together it goes sk, out, scout. Let me show you another example. Let's do um, one that is another compound word, like a raincoat. Now, let's say if a child bumped into this word and they weren't sure what it says or how to read it, this is what I will ask them to do. First thing we would do is we would label the vowels. The first vowels that we see, and we see a vowel here, and we see vowels here. Now the reason why I just labeled these as one vowel is because these are what we call a vowel team. Okay, so I'm going to put a VT above this because a vowel team is when it makes a long vowel sound. You have two uh, vowels together and the first vowel would say its name so it says A, not A. Here we have another vowel team. Vowel teams where you have two vowels put together, they make one sound and it's a long vowel sound so this says O. And then we will recognize where we see those two consonants 
right next door to each other. So I'm going to put a C here for consonant, C here for consonant. I'm going to draw a dotted line in between these two consonants. So how will we figure out this word? Well, first we start with the first syllable, and we will sound it out. Rain, rain, rain. So we know that says rain. We cover up this syllable, and it says k o t coat, coat. So we have rain, coat. Now, the reason why it's so important for kids to get beyond thinking that one letter, uh, a vowel makes one sound like a, ah, is that if you were asked a child to spell raincoat and they didn't know about these vowel teams, they would most likely spell raincoat like this. They would spell r and k at, rancot, because they don't understand yet that those two vowels put together make a long vowel sound. That A does not just say A, ah, but it says A. And A can be spelled in different ways. It can be spelled A-Y, it can be spelled A-I. So if